What's up, guys? It's Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down some of Josh Palmer's route running from the 2021 Senior Bowl, okay? So I think he's probably one of the most standout receivers from this week, and I think he's run a lot of great routes that you guys can get a lot of value from. And today we're going to be just talking about the inside of it, kind of how to get separation on a corner route, a dig route with an outside release, then we're going to talk about a slant route. But first things first, fellas, I want to talk to you about this ultimate wide receiver bundle package that we just started offering on my website. It is $10 off. We're having a $10 off sale. If you check out that very first link in the description, what you'd get is our wide receiver 30-day gym program and our technique manual for $10 off, okay? So very first link in the description. Hope we can get you guys on that soon. I think it'll give you a lot of value in terms of what wide receivers need to do. Let's get started with this breakdown, okay? So first things first here, we're going to be talking about this kind of corner route where he gives this little peek back, break this thing off at the top, and obviously gets a lot of separation from this DB. So let's talk about it, right? So off the line of scrimmage, right? We've got DB kind of in this like catch, maybe two, three yards off, right? So what do I have to do in this situation? Obviously, reason why I can't, even if he's inside shade in this case, right? He's not inside shade here. He's more head up. But even if he is inside shade, I can't just go run this route because DB's going to be able to get hands, going to wall me to the sideline, and that's a very, very tough throw for this quarterback. So what I have to do is I got to attack him. I got to attack his midline. Now you see Palmer, he comes off and he just gives him a quick one, two, little head fake to the inside, comes off explosive. He gets off the line fast. Now, there's many different ways you could do this, right? You come off the line fast. To give an explosive one two, you kind of hesitate, give a one two, hesitate, go, or you kind of maybe give a foot fire, close the distance, step on his toes, give him a one two or a single jab to the inside, and take the outside release. That's fine. That's that's honestly all three of those can work in this situation. Obviously, the read that you are and the timing of the play matters, but this is just one of those one of the one of the ways that he makes this thing work. Right? He comes off the line explosive, gives a one two, bursts up to the outside. Now, when we get up to the outside, it's very important that we do what? Number one thing is we got to make the DB think fade. Right? Got to make him think vertical. Got to make him think I'm just taking an outside release and I'm just going. So two things that come down to that, pad level and speed, being able to stay in stride, not giving any indicators by slowing down or chopping your steps or raising your pad level up. No indicators. That's the goal, right? So now he's coming off fast. And now what does he do? He gives this little peek back with his eyes at the last second, right? Now this little peek back right here, this serves to self-fade even more, right? Because when you guys run a fade, you're eventually going to look back for the ball, right? So we want to try to make this DB think, oh crap, I am got beat over the top. I'm going to try to get hands. I'm going to try to be able to make this play that I'm just sudden. I pop this thing off right in stride. This DB stumbles a little bit. Obviously, the cut I don't think necessarily made him fall. I think he just kind of tripped over his own feet. But we're getting separation regardless on this, right? We're getting separation because I sold fade. DB committed his hips. He's not able to get hands, and I'm being sudden with my break. There's no indicator. That is the number one thing that I want to talk about here. When you guys are peeking back for that ball, you want to give no indicator. When you guys give this little peek back, you're looking back for this thing, you do not want to raise your pad level up. You do not want to stand straight up tall. You want to keep a good pad level, keep a good arm drive, good leg drive, you're right in stride, and we pop this thing off suddenly, because that's what creates explosion, but also that's what will get us out of this break ultimately, right? And you see that's exactly what Palmer does. He's able to run out of this thing and widen the gap. That's a great route by him. Let's watch this thing again, full speed one more time. So coming off one, two, first up vertical, peek back with those eyes, sudden stick, make this DB stumble over his own feet, then it gets some separation. Great route. So now we're going to be talking about inside shade DB, and what do I got to do when he takes away the inside and I got to run a dig route, okay? So there's a common situation, there's a common question that I get asked a lot is just like, hey, if he's got press, he's got hard inside press, or he's inside shade, this isn't really necessarily, I would call it hard press, but he's taking away the inside. I don't want to force the inside release if I don't have to, right? Trust yourself at the top of the route. So you see how he gives this little kind of squirt release, pushes up vertical, gets to the depth of the route, and snaps this thing off and is able to get some separation. So this is a textbook route. When we come off the line, now he comes off and you see how he kind of attacks his leverage here, sees that this DB's taking away the inside. He doesn't want to force the inside release and get walled, right? So he kind of squares him up, attacks his leverage, gets him off that platform because when I take this outside release, the goal is obviously what? To get him to commit those hips and get him to run with me. I want to make him think vertical. I want to make him think fade. So if I attack his leverage and I get him to move off that leverage and keep it, that sets up some space for me to the outside, but also that sets up different kind of routes um, as the game goes on, as the practice goes on, or as the one-on-ones go on, seven-on-seven, whatever you guys are playing right now, it sets up future things that you could do because now I do the same exact release. Maybe I get him to keep his leverage and then I beat him to the outside with a fade or I beat him with a deep corner or I beat him with a comeback, right? He's going to remember that. So I come off and I do the same release. I get him sitting to the inside. I go over here. Now he overcommits. Now he's running with me. He's like, I'm not going to get beat over the top again. And that's how it can kind of build, right? So again, I'm here. You see Palmer does a great job, great pad level, staying in stride. That's why I think he's such a talented route runner. Very, very impressed with this guy. Didn't see a whole lot of his film. And 
until um, the Senior Bowl. Didn't really see him run a whole lot of routes, and I'm very, very impressed by how he runs routes. Um, so great job with the good pad level. Great job pumping those arms and driving those legs, making this DB think vertical. Because when we get him to run and we get him to turn his hips, he's staying patient, right? He's watching those hips here. But it's really important that we don't give him any indicator. Because imagine if I'm here and I start to raise my pad level up and start to chop my feet with this DB watching his hips. That's going to be very, very hard for us to get any kind of separation, right? That's why it's so important when you're up against a good DB, a talented DB, that those little things matter. The little details matter. The devil's in the details, right? So being able to sell vertical, being able to have good pad level, being able to run in stride, that's what gets this guy to be to, to really necessarily just run. The goal is to get him to turn and run. Now, when we're here, we want to be able to change direction on a dime. Now, how am I able to do that? I'm able to cut right in stride, and you see he snaps down. This is textbook right here. Being violent with his hips, and you see how he's bringing his chin to his knee. That is the position where we decelerate. There is This is the position that every receiver should be trying to get to when you guys snap down because that's the only way I'm able to decelerate selling vertical. So many guys, they'll be running fast, they'll be going full speed, but when they try to change direction, they don't drop low. They don't get this low or their back is straight up and they're leaning back and their weight is shifted on their heels. If you can get here, that's going to stop you. That's what halts you, but also that puts you in an explosive position to drive out of the break and widen the distance, right? And You see, we're able to snap here, we're able to get out, we get this DB to commit a little bit, we're able to swat his hands by, be physical, and then I'm able to widen the distance because I'm in that explosive position and now that shoots me out. Now I have energy down this 90 degree cut and I could pump my arms and run and focus on widening the distance because it is a race to this spot. That's a great job by Palmer selling vertical. The only way you change direction going vertical is by being violent with your hips, bringing your chin to your knee, getting in that low position because that will drive you out of the break. Great route overall. Let's watch this thing again full speed. Great job using that squirt release all the way from the release to the top of the route to the acceleration. That's a great job here by Palmer. Really like this route. Okay, so now we're going to be looking at this kind of like slant route with this little hesitation kind of wide step. So we're going to be talking about kind of the technique behind this wide step and why we decided to go with this and how this is a great release that you can use as a receiver against maybe a bigger physical guy. No, necessarily Palmer's the bigger physical guy in this case. However, if you're a smaller receiver, there's a great release that you can use, right? So again, you see how he hesitates and he throws that wide step, right? Now he accelerates over that middle and catches that ball. DB's got maybe a yard or two away from him. That's a lot of separation at this level, fellas. So let's talk about this. So you see how he gives this little hesitation, but you see when he hesitates, he's in that kind of like good range right here, right? Now, when you're in this range or this DB has to make a decision, that's how we can get separation on a slant route against this kind of like press, soft press, off man kind of situation. Because like if you're here, everybody loves to go with the diamond release where you take three hard steps on a 45, you self fade, you get this DB to turn his hips and then we break it back underneath. But dude, at the next level, you're going to have to have more than that. That can't be just your single go-to release. Yes, it works. Don't get me wrong. I, I, and I think if executed, it's a great release to do. you got to have other tools in your toolbox, though, right? So now when you come off here and you give him this little hesitation, you're in this good range, right? You're in this range where that DB cannot touch you from just standing there. He has to address you. So if this DB tries to come at you and get hands, he has to lunge. Then I could just swat his arms off and rip back underneath. But again, this DB decides to shuffle, decides to wash his hips. So I decide to go with this little hesitation wide step, right? So I'm pushing off of this first step right here. I'm pushing off my inside leg and I'm throwing my outside leg outside of his frame. You see how much he commits his shoulders, how much he commits his hips. Because when you get your whole body going this way, that's going to get this DB to turn. Because where should he be looking? He should be looking hips. So if you stay square, if you keep your shoulders and your hips square and you just give maybe a little lean out of there with your head and your shoulders, that's not going to get anybody to move. But you throw. You want to think of it as like you're pushing off this inside leg and you're throwing your hips towards the sideline. I'm throwing out towards the sideline. That's what gets this DB to turn those hips. That's what gets him to be off this platform and ultimately have his hips lock out because we're accelerating off this thing. And you see how he's driving out of this break, pumping those arms. That's a great route here by Palmer, really making sure that we move this DB off the platform. You want to hesitate, be in that range, force the DB to make a decision. So for you smaller guys, you don't want to try to just get in a hand fight with a bigger guy because you're not going to win. It's like a jujitsu guy trying to fight a boxer and just trying to box him. You're going to try to take him down. You're going to beat him with quickness. So if you're a smaller guy against a bigger physical guy, what you got to do is you got to beat him with your quickness. You got to understand range. You got to understand that he's got to address you. When he addresses you and lunges at you, he's off balance. We avoid, we can shoulder reduce, we could just swat and we could just go. Or if he decides to go with you and shuffle with you, he's at a disadvantage because we should be quicker than that guy. Okay, let's watch this play again full speed one more time. Great job hesitating, throwing that wide step, getting that DB off his platform and then accelerating out of this break. Great job. All right, guys, I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you guys have any questions at all, please leave those in the comments. Um, I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And also, if you want a $10 off ultimate wide receiver training package, fellas, the wide receiver 
receiver gym, 28 days of wide receiver gym workouts that you guys need to do. Um, everything receivers need to do in the gym. Check out that very first link in the description bundled with our receiver manual, our receiver technique manual, all the technique that we teach in one place. Hope to get you guys on that soon. I'll see you guys next time.